name is David Wright, and my novel is Elf Lord. He felt the battle rage building with each blow. Sooner or later they would have him. A blade would find his back unseen, or duck just under his parry, and he would fall just as his brother and father before him. But this knowledge did not deter him. He wanted them to attack. He wanted them to come at him all at once, to feel their blades clash with his, and to see their blood fill the air. But they would not. Once again they cowered behind their fallen comrades. Fight me, he screamed. Tears were running down his face. His skin was on fire. The air shot hot from his mouth like dragon's breath. Fight me, you cowards. The Grisers brandished their blades, gritted their teeth with rage, but they would not step forward, and soon Mithrain saw why. Something was coming up the path. A blue light, a blue ball of fire. The geysers screamed as one by one they were thrown off the steep knoll to their deaths, or incinerated where they stood like dry leaves in a furnace. Mithrain felt his heart race with wonder. With one last desperate lunge, he drove his long glaive deep into the red earth. Self-discovery. While the main characters, Mithrain and Alona, both think they know who they are, but as they encounter trials and hardships, they change and their true natures are revealed. Mithrain becomes dark and violent, and Alona, well, she's downright terrifying. When we first meet Mithrain, he's a young cavalier elf, hell-bent on winning duels and pretty girls. Or at least one pretty girl, the prettiest of all girls, the Princess Alona. But after the death of Mithrain's father and brother, Mithrain returns to Kristana seeking revenge. Kristana itself is changing. Magic is failing, leaving the great magical houses suddenly vulnerable to unknown enemies. Um... I, I was influenced, I guess, um, by mythology, Greek mythology and Roman mythology, but also um, uh, there's one author that I really, really enjoyed was uh, R.A. Salvatore and his character Driz Doerd, and he has such fascinating names that I, I feel like I copied him a bit. Well, I've always been in love with uh, medieval lore, especially the world of Tolkien. Uh, but in later years, I picked up Salvador. I was walking through a shop and I saw a book called The Thousand Orcs. And on the cover um, by the amazing uh, Todd Lockwood, the artist, was a picture of this elf, Drizdo Erding. And he was he was fighting, I guess, like a thousand orcs. And I, I later, you know, I read the novel and he doesn't actually fight a thousand orcs, but he's still the greatest swordsman of all time. So I wanted to do that. I always loved the old Bruce Lee movies and uh, Toshiro Mihuni's Samurai in Akira Kurosawa's Samurai Stories. Um, but I, I made my hero, he had to fight with a, a, a glaive instead of a sword, because uh, historically that was the superior weapon. Yes, uh, Mithrin. He was, he was born long before the story was. Yeah, I think I, I needed to, um, you know, I, I had the idea of the combat, and so I, I had some sort of very specific things that I wanted this character to do, but then I really needed a reason for him to engage in this combat, and, uh, and then the world sort of, uh, sort of evolved around that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of combat in the story. <laughs> well, Ilona... Um, or at least who she becomes. Uh, her, her progression through the novel really surprised me. Um, well, she starts off as being um, basically, you know, the most beautiful woman of all time kind of thing. And then, but I didn't want her to just 
um, you know, be a pretty face. And so I, I wanted in the women I have uh, had relationships with, they've always been very powerful people. So I wanted her to have her own power. And so that manifests itself in a very interesting way in the novel. Yeah, as you know, writing, it can be a funny thing. I mean, you can map it all out, uh, writing each scene, um, or you can, you, can, you can piece different mm -hmm. scenes, mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. just might have an idea for how um, um, you might want some characters to engage and then place it in the novel somewhere else. And I've done both of those things. But I think for this one, I really did start with the beginning, and then I worked through the novel sort of just discovering most things as I went along and so as you were discovering it so was I as I was writing it um uh Ilona's uh, buddy her her girlfriend Zanfir she kind of cracks me up through some of the story so she was actually I don't know if he's easiest but she was she was fun to write Uh, like I said, with uh, Ilona, um, she was she was difficult, and uh, uh, she had to go through her own uh, progression, her character uh, progression, and that that was a lot of work. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to combine this with your next question. <laughs> um, um, that's like, I, I want to give this as a tip to novelists, would-be novelists, and that is that uh, the hardest thing is to push, to push through to the end of your novel. I've started so many stories and then got lazy, and I think that's the worst thing you can do. You have to believe that this thing that you're doing is worthwhile, and even if the story ends up by the end being trash and irredeemable and you can't fix it, it doesn't matter because you've learned something through that process. And uh, no matter what, it's still better than sitting around and watching TV. So that would that would be the hardest thing to push through to the end, and that would be my advice to to wouldn't be novelists uh, to keep going until the whole thing is done. Oh, this is an easy question to answer. Okay, because there are so many. But uh, King James Bible, it, it's really the foundation of West, Western literature. And, um, and then uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, of course, um, that's, you know, instrumental. Where would we be in terms of fantasy literature without it? And then there's the, the Driz series that I've mentioned already by R.A. Salvatore. And you can't go wrong with those. Those are a lot of fun and uh, and uh, sort of a really good model for how to put together a, put together a fantasy novel. Uh, yes, yeah, so Lord of the Rings, um, the writing, uh, that really could hold up as a model um, for how to write. Um, partly because he creates such a wonderful world that is so rich and deep. And I think everybody would agree with that. But then also just the, the time he takes... I mean, he spent a long time writing those books. So, um, uh, like R. A. Salvatore, he he he'd be fast. He'd be like me. He'd probably write it off. He'd probably write it off in two weeks. But not not um, J. R. R. Tolkien. He he takes a long time to write his books, and it's just a pleasure for him. Even if we never ever read them, he still would have enjoyed them himself. I'm sure uh, if anybody would like to uh, visit Antimatter Dreams, it's kind of a little uh, website for uh, young authors to send in poems or stories. I can't pay you, but if you just want to be published, um, that's a good place to go. So it's just called Antimatter Dreams, and it's just uh, uh, an online magazine.